Hey friends, and welcome to Using Wonders or Maravillas uh, virtually, given uh, what's happening right now with uh, the coronavirus. We know that many schools or districts or even whole states are closing schools, but yet um, we need ways to still uh, reach out to our students virtually or digitally. And, um, or maybe it's just about finding resources that you can send home, uh, pencil paper, and that's okay too. My name's Brandon Harvey, National Literacy Specialist with McGraw-Hill Education. And we are going to kind of dive into looking at how to find resources uh, to print for students for a week or two weeks or multiple weeks. But also those of you who do have students that number one, have access and perhaps devices um, at home, this would also be useful for you as well. Now, I am logged in as a fourth grade uh, classroom teacher here, but please know that this works for Wonders from Maravillas, uh, kindergarten all the way through sixth grade. All of the buttons, all of the um, sort of way we go about finding things and the, the click path is going to all be the same. So let's start if you're just needing to go log in to your teacher account and find resources very quickly. So one of the things you can see is that I'm logged in here. My calendar is at unit five, week four. Well, maybe I want to go and choose some resources to send home to review. So I'm going to go maybe back to a previous unit and week. So I can click into unit and choose a week wherever it is that I need to go. And here I am at unit four, week one. Now from this home screen, you can clearly see your printables. Now it does not matter whether you're using Wonders 2014 or version Wonders 2017 or Wonders version 2020. Um, you will see your printables here. They may look a little different depending on the version, but you will have printables here. So I could very easily, if all I need to do is print things, I can click here on the printer icon. And there I can see, for example, here are all of my spelling pages. Now, as a teacher, I can download these. I could um, go to file and print and send these home as maybe um, sort of um, some practice pages to do as they are at home away from school. Or of course you can download and then attach them in an email. So if you have parents or guardians emails, maybe even your students have an email account, you could send via email with a message to complete these resources. So again, I can choose the printer icon on any of these printables. Also over here on the, the cog or the wheel, for example, if I go to this practice book page, I can send home the original format so I can Again, open original format, that's gonna be that same PDF version that you saw. Um, now, what if I need multiple weeks? So uh, remember, I could come up here, I could say, okay, there's week one, and then maybe I go to unit four, week two. And so now I'm looking at the next week's set of materials. All of my printables here for that week have switched over. So it's a really easy way using these drop down menus to change unit and week to find printables that would go with that particular week. Now at the same time, what you'll also notice is changing on your screen down here are the games and the activities. Now, of course, you would have to have digital internet access and a device, but same sort of thing. Notice that each game sits in its own little box there and you could click on that wheel or that cog and again, click assign this resource. Those of you teachers who might also use Google Classroom, you could share these resources via Google Classroom. Now, this really is a great way to find things very quickly and easily. You could do the same thing by coming over here to your resource library. And now I'm here in my resource library for this particular unit and week. I can see things that are in my slideshow. Again, I could, with one click, share or assign these resources here. So even if it's pages from a text or a simple graphic organizer or a background video, I could simply find those very quickly and share those as well to sort of do some instruction digitally. So you may want to, if you are assigning these things, you could assign them in a certain order where they're going to um, 
read the essential question and talk about it maybe with a family member. Then they're gonna watch that background video. Maybe you're gonna have them do a little journal activity. You could create assignments that could be done digitally. Same thing here as I scroll down, you have access to all of your eBooks and it could be as simple as assigning um, a literature anthology text or kindergarten, first grade, maybe assigning a big book for students to listen to. Same thing with your leveled readers. So here, again, it's, it's a little more open because these are all of the resources for the whole curriculum, but you can use your unit and week dropdowns here to sort of focus in and find things that are particular to that unit and that week of instruction. Now let's talk about assigning something. So for example, I'm already here. I'm gonna to go to my student practice pages. And I just wanna throw out some ideas. I know that some teachers are doing maybe some choice boards where they're gonna maybe have a list. They're gonna send a list home of different items that students could choose to do, different games and activities. Um, you also have um, for your younger students, I've heard teachers creating bingo cards where the kids maybe can, again, have some choice in, in what they do and there's different activities on the bingo card that they have to maybe log on and find and do. So that, again, is a way to use digital in a very creative way. So, for example, if I know I want to send home some grammar practice, so I'm going to find my grammar reproducibles here. And then um, I'm going to, like I said, I'm on unit, uh, what did I say, unit four here, <laughs> week two. So I'm going to find my unit four, week two. It's all organized by unit and week. I could have also used my drop down uh, there as well. But here it is. And now um, I'm going to assign. So this is assuming that your students have internet access, have a login for ConnectEd, and that you have um, your classroom rostered so if you go to assign things like I'm doing right now and if you were to scroll down here from the assignment manager and you did not see your class list here this would not be possible I would encourage you to find on our McGraw-Hill website we're gonna have additional videos or support pieces tutorials on how to rod, uh, roster uh, your students if you don't have that um, sort of self rostering done at a district level um, and how to assign that content and get your students um, online to use the digital but I have my class roster here so I've got my grammar practice I'm gonna give it a name I'm just gonna call it grammar um, here you would want to give instructions please review and come these pages um, if I want to you know sort of assign them but also um, have a back and forth with students I can this is also very interesting anytime you assign anything whether it's a, a, a practice page or um, a leveled reader or a decodable text you could turn the student recorder on and that would be another great interaction where students record their voice reading um, something that they've done or reading a piece of text now it's gonna only record probably about a minute at a time but it could be a great way to have a little fluency check or just to hear students reading a passage or a page all right I'm gonna assign this to all of my students I could choose specific students to get certain assignments at different differentiated levels but I'm just gonna say all so it checks all of them I'm gonna scroll down oh by the way you can say when the assignment starts and when it's due so um, if you want to make multiple assignments that are gonna go across a week or multiple assignments that may appear over several um, weeks depending on you know how long you might be out of school depending on how long you're out of school uh, this could be helpful too so I'm just gonna go ahead and have that assignment start today so I'm gonna scroll down and then hit assign all right so now that I've made that assignment I want to jump over to another browser where I'm logged in as a student from my class so here I am on my grade four again this would look very similar kindergarten through sixth grade English or Spanish you, um, the students have access to their resources. So like I said, if you wanna do a choice board or maybe a, a bingo card board where, where they're gonna go find different resources, games, activities, um, stories to read, you've got, um, they have access to all of their resources here. But you can see here that the assignment I sent, once the students log on, they'll see a little number one, right? That's their to-do, to -do. there's their to-do list. So let's take a look at this uh, grammar assignment. 
So here we are, and I, as a student, would come and click to open my assignment. I, of course, could print these pages out if I needed to, but I'm going to be able, like I said, do them digitally because this is assuming that students have uh, internet access and a device. And so here we are going to have to read the sentence and circle the pronoun. So I've got a circle tool, right? Can use my circle tool and use that to circle. I've also got underline, box, highlighter. Um, I've also got a typing tool because it says write an O for object or S for subject pronoun. And I would come over here, making sure that it's the right size there and put that on to their page. Again, and then down here in the bottom right hand corner, there are multiple pages, right? Because I sent the entire week's worth of grammar practice. And so all of those practice pages are here. If you want um, only to do certain pages, you don't need them to do all of them. Let me just minimize this. You can see there are page numbers assigned. And so you could say, oh, just do you know pages 81, 82, and 83. Or you may, again, that's why putting those instructions in your assignment are so, so critical. Once students have done, of course, they need to come down here to the bottom right and hit save. This is going to save to their assignment that they've been sent, but also it's going to save in their work in their quote unquote virtual binder. So I'm going to close this. I can see it's saved. I can write a note to my teacher. This was, you know, this was an easy assignment or um, I was able to complete all of them, but I had a question about. So again, sort of com some communication there. Also, I just want to remind you, rather than clicking open, if the student needed to print this, right, they can click on the cog or the wheel just like a teacher would, and they would open an original format, and that's where they could print this assignment. But I've done it virtually, um, assuming, right, that I did all that work, and then I would submit it, I would hit submit, and it would go back to my teacher. Okay, so now I'm back over at my teacher side, and if I come over here to manage and assign, and I go to my assignment manager, we should be able to see that grammar practice. And again, I can open this up, I can see which students have submitted. I know one of 50, of course, it's just that one demo student that I went into. And then I could view their submission. And so here is what the student wrote back to me. If I wanna comment back to them, I could have that back and forth. I could mark as completed and save it. If it's not completed, right, because I might be sending it back to them. So there's a little return button. Uh, so if I have notes to them, I could do that. I can also open up right their actual work so let's click on the little icon there and you can see there's where i circled there's where I, and again if i as a teacher wanted to come in and maybe just type a note hey great job okay i could do that and then i could save that and again i could send that back to them so they would know that i had seen uh, the work as well. Um, if I don't need that back and forth, I could just mark as completed and hit save. Thank you so much for your attention to this brief video on how to use the Wonders and Matavias kindergarten through sixth grade materials virtually. Again, hopefully you've seen that you can easily print um, and send home any of the PDF resources. Again, you can go from your weekly printables or from your resource library to get graphic organizers or additional supplemental resources. Don't forget, if your students do have internet access and uh, you have them registered in your class, you can send and receive assignments. Or even if you just wanna have a choice board and have students log on, play different games and activities, review uh, stories, reading stories that have been previously taught, or maybe just letting them have free choice to have some independent reading time, a way to keep up their skills. Uh, because we know that instruction stalls a little bit when we're not there in person, but this is a great way to sort of keep up their skills uh, virtually. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. Everybody keep washing your hands. We will get through this together. And uh, keep in touch with the McGraw-Hill um, website for additional resources and information regarding all of McGraw-Hill's subject area resources, kindergarten through 12th grade, 
Um, also, tips for teachers and information for parents as well will be um, continuously updated and posted. Thanks so much and have a great day.